Welcome to the HTML class brought to you by Creative Online School. My name is Keith and I'm going to be your instructor. I've been doing web design and development for about 20 years now and I've taught hundreds of students in both classrooms as well as online different aspects of the web. Now this is your first time in any kind of programming or doing anything outside of just surfing the web. I've got great news for you. We're not going to be doing any programming in this course. Yeah, you heard me right. No programming. Confused? Well, guess what? HTML is actually a markup language, and you'll be doing coding, not programming. So hopefully that sets your mind at ease. Now, programming refers to code that actually executes something. Like when you fill out a contact form on a website, that gets sent to somebody. Or maybe an application that uses a password to let you into the website. Or maybe just something that adds two numbers together. That's programming, because it actually performs an action when you run it. Now, HTML is more like a word processor. It uses it to style a web page and lay things out and give them color and placement on the page. So kind of like a magician giving away their secrets, I'm going to show you the magic that makes up a web page. Now let's take a look at some of what HTML looks like. Now this is what a basic paragraph looks like in HTML. Now it's not too far off from what it looks like if you opened it up in a Word doc and just started typing, but you notice some greater than or less than characters surrounding a letter or letters throughout the paragraph. These are what are called tags. These tags are used to tell the browser how to display something. Now for instance, in this example, you're gonna see a paragraph of text that starts out with a less than sign, followed by the letter P, followed by the greater than symbol. Now this is what tells a browser to start a new paragraph. At the end of the paragraph, you're going to see almost that same series of characters, but with a forward slash before the P. This is what tells the browser to stop the paragraph and start something new. Now this could lead to a new heading, a new paragraph, an image, or just be the end of the page. Either way, we've told the browser when to start and when to stop something. Pretty easy, right? This is how almost all HTML code works. There's only a few instances of tags that don't end, but I'll show you those a little bit later and it'll make sense why. Now, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So let's break that crazy computer speak down and make it make a little bit more sense. The hypertext is any kind of text that you select and link to something else. Now, this could be another web page or a PDF or an email or anything that you want to send it to. This is what separates a web page from just a regular text page. You actually link to other things. Now the second half of that, the markup language, is exactly what I mentioned earlier. This is not a programming language, but a markup language. Meaning we're making up plain text and we're giving it some structure and characteristics to make it look better. So back to our example, if you feel you're not remembering to close every tag that you open, think of HTML as standing for hamburger text markup language. And picture your tags as being the buns of a hamburger. If you put one on top, you need to put one on the bottom. Otherwise, it's not really going to be a hamburger. It's going to be just kind of a messy meat thing, right? Okay, ready to move on? The difference between HTML and HTML5. HTML5 has been a bit of a buzzword over the last several years. Now there's been previous versions of HTML, but none of them are really touted as being HTML3 or HTML4. I think the main reason that this version was given a more specific name was because it was the first upgrade that really had some impressive features worth talking about. Now to really understand the benefits of HTML5, Let's first talk about some of the previous versions and what the differences were. Now, for the most part, the versions of HTML dealt with trying to give designers and coders better control over aligning objects on a page and really greater control over tables and things like that. Now, these were small but important changes at the time. Now, remember that HTML is the coding language for browsers, so when writing HTML, the browser is what interprets that code and makes it something visual. Things have improved greatly over the years, but back when we were coding in HTML3, a site might display a lot differently from browser to browser. So the ability to have more control over how your web page looked was really important. When HTML4 came out, more tags were available, giving users greater control over the web pages, and browsers started to standardize how they display their code. 
one big change that came out around this time was the different types of HTML4, like transitional, which was for users transitioning from a web page using older versions of HTML. Now, the other option was HTML strict, or what some people called XHTML, which was, as the name implies, a much more strict form of HTML that required your code to be written a certain way to attempt to have it look the same across all browsers. Now, you might not notice some of the subtle differences between these variations of code, but sites like, let's say, Constant Contact still require XHTML code for its eblasts. HTML5 has gotten away from how strict this code was and really cleaned up a lot of the extra code that was in previous versions, as well as given us a bunch of new features that help to move away from plug-independent code like Adobe Flash to do cool things like play games and watch videos. So first, let's take a look at the very first line of code in an HTML file. Here's what was required in an HTML4 file. And here's what it looks like now in HTML5. It's much more simple and clean. It's less code. The less code that you have on your page, the faster it loads. So this was a smart choice. Previously, you needed something like Flash Player to be able to let visitors watch video or listen to audio files on your site. Those users would need a plugin install before being able to watch it. So you're possibly alienating some of your users. With HTML5, you no longer need these players, and you can just do it by simply adding a video or audio tag, something not previously available in HTML4. Now, later as we get into CSS, you're going to see how nice this feature is, but some of the new tags were added to define areas of the page, like header and footer, and nav and article, where before you had to create these with custom CSS div tags. Additionally, HTML5 brought out a bunch of advanced features like Canvas, which lets users draw on the page with the help of some JavaScript, uh, drag and drop capabilities to upload files, geolocation APIs, things like that. With all these new features, programmers have actually started creating games that run on HTML5, as well as web and mobile apps using it. HTML5 has become a very powerful upgrade with potential to be an even more powerful coding language in the upcoming years.